Hey, what's up, everybody? Matt here from MyRawIntuition.com, your host of the Raw Misfit Show. Welcome back to another episode. We've got another terrific episode for you guys and an outstanding guest to fill in for Jeanette while she is out finishing up the activities of Woodstock Fruit Festival. Uh, sounds like it was a great week out there for those guys, so I'm glad to hear that. Um, so yeah, Lissa from Raw Food Romance is going to be standing in and we're going to be talking about how to make the raw vegan lifestyle fun and exciting. All right. So, you know, it's, it's fun and exciting, you know, anyways, but we've got, you know, some good experience in this lifestyle and we're going to share our tips and some of the experiences that we've had that have helped us to make this lifestyle, you know, just as good as it can possibly be. All right. And so we do get uh, questions or at least, you know, I do about, you know, how to keep things interesting. And so we're going to share, you know, tips about this throughout today's episode. So guys, if you have any questions at all, I want you to make sure, make sure here, you put your question in that little question bubble down at the bottom there. Um, you can put it in the chat box, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a little difficult to go back and get all of the questions that are in there. So if you can just try and put your questions in that little question box, uh, that little bubble with the question mark in there. And that's much easier for us to go back and look at your questions. And we're going to try and get those all answered today at the end of the show. And so I see Lissa is here in the audience. So I'm going to bring her on and we can get started. So I am excited to meet up with Lissa again. Hey, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. I feel like we traveled back in time. I see, I see uh, you, uh, you're going to kind of a, a retro look that you used to have. I think, um, you know, this reminds me of when we did an interview back in 2016, I think it was. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that was, yes, we did that interview. Yep, I went back to my old retro style. I colored my hair black to the natural, like this is my natural color. Okay, um, nice. And I got the bangs back because I was missing them and Nate was like, you should get your bangs back because we were watching old videos of mine mm -hmm. and yeah. he was like, I miss your bangs. I'm like, I know I miss them too. So <laughs> I just cut them one day. <laughs> nice. Looks great. Very Thank nice. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, uh, yeah. So today's topic is, of course, how to keep the raw vegan lifestyle fun and exciting. And I think everybody in the community knows you're the queen of making this lifestyle fun and exciting. So I can't think of a better person to, you know, come on the show and, and talk about some of these things. Oh, thank you so much for the kind words. I, I really enjoy creating recipes and like, that's one of my tips is to get creative, like yeah. getting creative and expanding beyond what, what we might think is like, for example, a salad, right? When people think of a salad, it's pretty kind of normal, I guess, like iceberg lettuce, some tomatoes, some cucumbers, maybe some grated carrots. If yeah. you're lucky, if you go to like a, like a more kind of farm to table style of restaurant, you might get some mixed greens in there, right, some red right. onion maybe, but like it's the same salad over and over and over again. Yep. And no wonder people are bored, right? Because it's like, it's, it can get boring if you don't explore, but also you can get bored eating any diet. It doesn't matter what lifestyle you choose or what diet you choose. It can get boring if you don't mix it up and get creative and get out there and, and try new things, try new flavors. Like I had never eaten a lot of really like curry flavored things in my past. Mm -hmm. But when I went raw, I started exploring the curry spice family and like some Thai food flavors and different areas and different ethnicities and I tried using their spices in my dressings and I was like whoa there's like way more flavors out there than I knew existed because in my little world in my bubble that I was living in I didn't experience that so yeah um I just I love creating the recipes and that's why I have so many books because I just I'm constantly creating and it's great yeah 
Yeah, a hundred percent. I agree. Spices. I too. I don't know that. You know, I never really got into curries or any any of that like style of of dish uh, when I was growing up. Um, and yeah, the different spices that I have you know been introduced to and have used over the last like decade of doing this, it's like it's amazing how much you don't know that you're missing out on. And mm -hmm. and even just fruits, you know, like mm -hmm. I don't think I ever had a date or a mango. I don't remember ever having a mango even when I was a kid. So it's just like, yeah, there's, there's so many fruits and spices and different vegetables and things out there that, uh, you know, when you're in the standard American bubble of, mm -hmm. of eating and living, you, you know, you're kind of, reduced down to just a few different types of meals. And I think it's funny that people claim that going to a, like a raw vegan lifestyle is restrictive when the standard American diet, in my view, is, you know, just as restrictive if you're looking at it from that sense, because they're, they're eating like, what, tacos and uh, burritos and pizza. And, you know, there's just a few different things people circulate around, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just like, um, there's so many more possibilities, I believe, when you get into a plant-based diet and, and, and a raw diet. So, so yeah, that's, that's what I've found. And yeah, it's, it's working, working well. I agree. And on that note too, with the, like the limited amount of foods, like I used to think I'd be like, well, we can have spaghetti one night and then pasta one night and then pizza one night and then burritos one night. It's all just like a random select few ingredients like it's yeah. animal product oil salt sugar flour and then your token vegetables or whatever else that, you know to change the flavor up yeah. but it's always like the same base like you have like a fettuccine alfredo or you have like a meatball pasta it's still just pasta yeah right oil and salt and animal products it's the same stuff just created in different ways so when you expand into uh vegan or even raw vegan like you're eating all these other foods that you might not have had before like i actually for the first time in my life believe it or not <laughs> had a yellow dragon fruit just like last week oh wow i never amazing. had one before because in canada they're like rare like it's really super hard so the first five years i didn't even know they existed yeah and then here in vegas like i was started seeing them more because i did the my the ombre lab i actually have it here i'm, I'm gonna do another gut microbiome test next nice. week cool. and uh in my test results it said that i need to eat more dragon fruit for oh, wow. my back like to feed certain ones that um want that yeah so i've i've been like you know your reticular activator in your brain is like looking for dragon fruits everywhere. And I see, and I saw some yellow ones. I'm like, I'm going to try a yellow one, right? I love yellow dragon fruit. Like I never Me knew. Too. And I'm, I'm 42 and I just, like, just <laughs> discovered it. So it's like, yeah. there's so many things out there that we don't explore necessarily yeah. until we're like in a different, in a different realm of thought really. So <laughs> yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Yellow dragon fruit. I think it was maybe a couple of years ago that I first tried a yellow dragon fruit. I had had the, the red ones um, and the ones that I would get at the grocery store weren't always the best. They like didn't really have too much flavor. Yeah. But, um, the yellow ones are so sweet. They're yes. so delicious. And, and yeah. I know at least what I've heard is that even the red ones get, you know, more flavorful. Mm -hmm. I'm sure more like if you get them from a more tropical area, maybe. And yeah, not. if they're riper and stuff. And right. I, yeah, I found like the, I found some really small ones at Whole Foods uh -huh. and those ones were like super deep red wow. and pinkish, like, yeah. And they were sweeter, not okay. as sweet as the yellow ones though. The yellow ones top the charts for sweetness. They're my yeah. favorite. And the seeds are really easy. Sorry. The seeds are really easy to eat in the yellow ones oh, as yeah. opposed to the red ones or even the prickly pear. Like those ones are kind of hard but okay. yeah it's just it, it's amazing how many different varieties of things there are out there to eat like it's not just one or two things and you go on to a raw diet and you think oh i'm just going to be eating this and this and it's like yeah we love mangoes but like what's beyond mangoes let's let's explore yeah. a little bit more and and as you know the studies are showing like people who are eating over 30 different varieties of foods every week have stronger microbiomes Right. So it's like, let's get some variety and let's try some new things. And yeah. you're not restricted to just a few things. You don't have right. to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, yeah, and, I, and that's actually one of my tips too, is to, you know, try a new fruit or vegetable every time you go to the grocery store, if you can. And, and that might require, you know, looking uh, at different types of grocery stores that you haven't normally been to, like an Asian market mm -hmm. or your, your farmer's markets, or if you have like a, like a wholesale, you know, market or store around where you live, you can find some really unique uh, items that you mm -hmm. probably never find in your regular grocery store. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that that's, you know, one of the tips that I had was to just be, you know, curious about mm -hmm. adding in new uh, fruits and vegetables that you're not used to having. And you'll you'll soon find that, yeah, there is so much abundance to this lifestyle that, you know, you didn't know existed because you were stuck in the kind of that standard American mindset. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I know. I love that you mentioned like the ethnic markets Yeah. because I feel like a lot of people might be not scared to go in them, but they just, they avoid them because they're used to their standard, you know, Costco, whatever, Safeway, whatever. Yeah. But exploring the other grocery stores, you might be surprised with how inexpensive the food is there because Nate and I, when we moved to Vegas, we always like, you default to what's normal what's natural you're like is there a winco here we're like looking for winco because we're yeah. used to winco and costco we're like where are those stores yeah but then um we're friends with john kohler who lives like 20 minutes from us nice. and he was like you guys have to go to la bonita they have like this amazing sale blah 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 so we went to la bonita which is a mexican supermarket mm, and cool. the prices on the food there is incredible we can get right now we can get six a tall full mangoes for a dollar. Wow. Six a tall full mangoes for a dollar. And we're like, why weren't we coming here more often? And I know that's just like because we're it's in peak season and they sure. have a great um supply or whatever. And in the winter time they're like three for a dollar, two for a dollar. But right now, like that's the only place in the city you can get them at that price. But we wouldn't have known had we not gone to a different store that was outside of our comfort zone, right? So yeah, like you say, we have to go to these other stores, like explore your neighborhood, go support the ethnic markets, like yeah. go and, and adventure around, find out what's new. Cause like the Asian market, 99 Ranch here, they have like all different kinds of bok choys. Like you can get like baby bok choy and sui choy and like all kinds of different bok choys and, and they're loaded with calcium. They're a great, um, variety choice of greens and you don't have it's not like you have to eat like bowls of bok choy it's like put like one or two little ones in your salad and just increase the variety slowly put something in your salad that you haven't had before grow your own microgreens like try some new stuff like explore and it can be fun i love that because that's one of my tips too <laughs> Nice. Yeah, no, that's a great point. And I love that you mentioned microgreens. Now you guys are big into mm -hmm. the microgreens and sprouts. Um, yeah, adding in, I mean, that's just a whole nother like world of, <laughs> of diversity and abundance that you can add into your lifestyle. So yeah, there's so many different things that you can start putting in uh, to your routine and, and your diets and just, you know, have fun with it and, and just explore and, you know, experience the the abundance that nature has to offer i think exactly that. i know there's so much out there uh, nate and i uh, so we read fiber fueled by dr will Bolsewix, which yep. is like probably one of my absolute favorite books great book since like ever since i read that like i think i read it two years ago now i've been like slowly introducing more and more variety building my gut microbiome and it's just like even though i felt awesome back then I feel like even awesomer and it's really hard to pinpoint or explain because it's not like I had to heal anything. Mm -hmm. So I don't really have like a, Oh, now I don't have this, but it's like, I just feel better and I don't know how to explain it. It's really interesting. But since reading fiber fueled, we geeked out one, one morning we're laying in bed. We're like, I wonder how many different things we buy and eat. Like, mm. cause he's all about like the fiber points or whatever, like you yep. add up, tally up how many you have in your salad and stuff. So we, we got in our notebook and we wrote down like everything that we buy within a week, right? And it's like, sometimes we'll only have something once a week. Sometimes we have something every day, like endive and radicchio. I eat every single day now. 
Mm. Um, and it was like 84 things. Wow. <laughs> oh my God, we eat a lot of different things. That's and cool. it included like herbs and nuts and seeds that we eat and all different kinds of stuff. And it was just yeah. like blown away by the amount of variety. But my, our diversity score when we did our microbiome test was 93%. So we've got a pretty good diverse microbiome and I'm excited to see my test because it's been six months since okay. I've made some pretty good changes. Yeah. Like I've added, um, so the endive and radicchio, I've added new to my diet. So like in two weeks, it'll be eight years raw for me. Okay. Nice. So only in the last six months have I done some changes just because I want to see, I want to follow the new science and yep. explore that a little yep. bit. So I've added the endive and the radicchio, um, fennel seeds. I put on every salad now because that was one of my suggested foods. I've been eating way more pears than I ever have in my life. Nice. The dragon fruit apricot was one of my suggested foods. So I've been adding that I've been making like a mango apricot, jalapeno soup which is just like oh so oh. good <laughs> so i've just been including those foods as much as i possibly can but like when, yeah. after we wrote that list out we're like what <laughs> so much variety <laughs> yeah dang 84 i need to do that i i've never i've never really i i think because i read i read fiber fueled a few years ago too and i don't think i ever went through and i actually calculated out so that'll be interesting i'm gonna have to do that soon hmm. um yeah. So cool. And I'm excited to hear what your next result, your next test result is because yeah, I, I agree. I think it's, it's so fun. Like I love to experiment on myself and, you know, see how the things that I'm implementing into my diet and lifestyle, how it affects me. And, and yeah, having that tangible, you know, result um, mm -hmm. and being able to look at it and compare like six months ago to now. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's awesome. So yeah, cool. exactly. Exploring your own body and exploring the, I mean, like the microbiome stuff has only been in the last couple, like recent years, right. like three to five years, we've really started to explore this because we've never had the ability to actually see everything that's going on in there because they would just not like they die or whatever because of the environment, right? The anaerobic right. environment and all the stuff. So they've just now been coming out with these studies. So it's like, we need to like, flow with the science and change and it's okay to change and it's okay to grow and, and move forward yep. and explore because it's the, it's the forgotten organ. Like our oh, yeah. microbiome is, is so 99.5% of our DNA. Like that's yeah. incredible. We're only 0.5% <laughs> human. <laughs> right, right. Like we need to be taking care of them and they thrive on fiber variety. So it's like, ah, I saw in the, in the chat really quick. This is the test. It's called ombre, yeah. ombre lab. Um, and if anyone wanted it, a link, I can see you can send me a DM or send Matt a DM and he can send a link too. But ombre lab is the one that we use. It's only in the U S um, Viome, I think does Canada as well. Mm. So Viome is a very similar, or people can join the Zoe research project, which, oh, yeah. uh, yeah, they do a gut test as well. And that's a monthly thing, I think to be part of it, but it's, it's the, one of the biggest microbiome studies that's like live going on right now, which is really yeah. fascinating. So they have people, um, contributing their stool samples to a big database of, all the stuff and you you get an app where you can like track all the food that you're eating so that they can see like what are you eating and how is it changing your microbiome and and like it's part of it's a study that's happening right now it's super cool so yeah. that's zoe and yeah that's really interesting i, I just love i'm such a geek <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish, and i don't know maybe they have done this but i doubt it but i want to see like a uh, population of raw vegans versus mm -hmm. standard eaters versus just whole food cooked vegan, you know, just to see how that yeah. differs and, and what the, you know, what the outcomes are for each different group. Exactly. And so many things come into play with that as well, because I was bottle fed as a baby. Mm. I asked my mom, I was like, so was I breastfed or bottle fed? I want to know. <laughs> and she's like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't know any better. I bottle fed you or whatever when she could have breastfed. I know some mm. mothers can't yeah. and that it, you know, it, 
keep your baby alive. That's all good, right? Yeah. But she could have breastfed, but she didn't. And she chose bottle and she was like, I'm so sorry. But I have a pretty good microbiome score overall compared. I'm sure it would be higher had I been a breastfed, but I'm like, I'm doing pretty good considering. Yeah. <laughs> so and yeah, it's just fun. It's all fun, but yep. yeah. Um, I wanted to say another uh, thing for uh, keeping it exciting. Yep. I wanted to talk about mindset because the mindset is probably the biggest part of it because I always think about pandas, like pandas only eat bamboo and they, and they don't complain about it. Right. <laughs> but like, even when you have all the variety in the world to eat, people still complain that there isn't enough variety, right? Like, you know, kids, when they're, they come into the house and they're like, oh, I'm hungry, mom. And you're like, there's food in the kitchen. They're like, no, yeah. there's not, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, there is, but it's like, our, it's our mindset. It's how we view it. And you can hype yourself up to pretty much anything. Like you can get excited about it. And if it's something that you truly want to do, you can get excited about it because it's a want, it's an actual desire. So get like, enjoy that desire and really embrace it. Get motivate yourself, right? Like, you know how you feel like when it's your birthday and you're going to have a big party or something and you're like yeah. oh, excited. You're like, I get to see my friends. And I get to see this. <laughs> it's like, try to embody that kind of excitement when it comes to planning your meals, like find some recipes online or in our books or whatever. And, or some favorite food that you love. Like if you do love mangoes, like go get some mangoes and plan out your day so that you can get excited about it. Most people don't plan out their day. Like you're like, I, I, when I do coaching, I always ask people, I'm like, so what are you gonna have for lunch today? What are you gonna have for dinner today? And everybody says, I don't know. I haven't <laughs> thought about it. Everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so funny because we don't think about it. We really don't plan our day. We wing it. We just like, we're like, oh, it's lunchtime and I'm starving. What am I gonna have to eat, right? But if we plan our day out and we write down our breakfast, lunch, and dinner and any snacks or whatever, we could be like, oh, I'm really excited because tomorrow I'm going to make this thing that I always wanted to make, or I'm going to make this thing that I absolutely love. Like you can actually get excited about the next meal and shifting your mindset into enjoying instead of saying things like, I need to eat raw, or I have to eat raw, or I have to do this and I need to do that. Like, you're implying that you're not good enough and that you're somehow lacking and you have to do this thing or you need to do this thing. Otherwise you suck as a person or whatever. Right. Instead yeah. of using the words need and uh, have to use the word want, like instead of saying, I need to eat raw, say, I want to eat raw. Cause you really, really feel the change. It's so crazy. Cause it's just a sound vibration. Right. And you just change yeah. the word. And it changes the emotion and changes your mindset just by changing how you say things. So that would be one of my tips is to work on the mindset shift. A hundred percent. I've actually got, yeah, I've got two tips that are based around <laughs> that as well, because nice. I agree. Mindset, mindset is the key. It's like the foundation of how we make this a long-term healthy and sustainable thing. Um, and I love that you brought up planning as well. I, I love, I heard an analogy like years ago, um, about the importance of planning, like, you know, everybody's into sports. So would you ever expect, do you think like your favorite sports team, like say it's a football team, you think they go into the game without planning anything? No, they've spent that entire week leading up to the game to plan out their exact game plan, what they were going to do, how they would defend something. You know, so you have to do something similar, right? So mm -hmm. I'm not saying you have to take a whole week to plan out one day, <laughs> but you know, just yeah. put some planning, put some forethought into, you know, your routine and, and what you're gonna start, you know, doing on a daily basis. And that's, yeah, like you said, it's gonna help so much. It's, mm -hmm. it's amazing the difference it can make. Um, also, yeah, the mindset is super key, as we've been saying. You know, one of the things I, um, you know, think that it's important, like you said, you got to shift your mindset and, and really redefine or reevaluate your definition of what fun and exciting means, right? So in the, in the old days, I used to think going to the bars and getting drunk and, you know, 
going to restaurants and things were like fun and exciting, right? So mm -hmm. those were my, um, my interpretations of what I considered fun and exciting. Now, after I've started to get healthy, and really I think my, my gut brain access has cleared up and I've been able to think a little clearer, now I find you know, learning about how to improve my health, learning how to mm -hmm. improve the quality of my life, um, you know, trying new fruits and trying new dishes in a, in a plant-based and raw vegan way. Um, those are things that I find fun and exciting now. You know, mm -hmm. it's like durian, like getting a durian, it, like for a special treat is like super fun and exciting for me. And so, yeah, just um, re-evaluating what you consider fun and, and really think about when, when you're thinking about these things uh, that, that you consider to be fun, you know, do they support your, you know, long term quality of life? Because mm -hmm. I think about the things that I used to find to be fun, they would give me hangovers, right? Mm -hmm. So most of the things I would do, I could, I would like feel the next day, I would be fatigued and, you know, dehydrated and all this stuff. So um, now it's like, I feel terrific the next day after I do these things that I consider fun. And so, yeah, I, I just think it's like Lissa said, shifting your mindset is incredibly important and, and just refocus what fun and, and excitement really means to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I have that too. Um, finding new ways to make it fun. Like I, I wrote here on my, uh, one of my tips is to make it into a game. Cause yeah. like, you know, how like, um, a lot of video games, they have like unlock this achievement and right. Like you're, you're trying to be better and trying to pass that level or whatever. Like we are drawn to a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people are drawn to the gaming kind of mindset. Yeah. So making a game of it, like we, like we mentioned earlier, like explore new varieties, like make it a game. When you go to the grocery store, buy something new. It's a simple little tiny thing that you can do, but like try something different and make it fun. Like meditate, like moving meditation while you're chopping your vegetables. Like you kind of like, um, open two coconuts with one knife, so to speak. Right. <laughs> um, you're like, you, you can, you can do your meditation, your affirmations. You can listen to an audio book. You could listen to a podcast like this. <laughs> you can like learn information while you are chopping. So in a way you get excited for that time because that's like your time to ingest information or, or maybe that's your time to listen to your favorite music in the kitchen. Maybe that's your time where you can connect with your family because a lot of people will do something like they're like, Oh, well, I'm the only one eating raw in my house. No one else is. And it's like, well, get the kids involved, like have them wash the vegetables if they're little, right? Like they can yeah. play in the water and wash the veggies. Um, if they're older and able, like get them to chop some stuff, get the kid to turn on the blender, right? Like, like have them involved in the process if you can, and help them to learn more about the foods that they're eating. And that can create a little bit more connection. They might want to actually have some of the food that you make because they were part of making it. They're like, I want to taste it now or something, right? So like making it fun, bringing family in, bring music in, dance in the kitchen, like make it fun. Because if you don't make it fun, it becomes boring because it's up here. We can make anything boring. I could be totally bored with this lifestyle if I want it to be. Yeah. But I, I love it. I enjoy it. I love the creativity. Like we were, we've been talking, like all of the things about the lifestyle, I love how it makes me feel, how I prepare things, how I get to share it with Nate, like sharing with friends and family is a big thing too. That's like, yeah. I mean, food is like a center of social, right? But it's not necessarily what we're eating. It's the fact that we're eating together. Right. So like somebody could be eating a raw salad and it's the only reason that it creates friction is because your salad is a mirror to the other person's choices and they, they feel fear. They feel all these kinds of things. When they see your salad, they feel rejected. They feel like you're changing and they're not, they feel like they're not good enough or their choice is bad or whatever. Like they feel all these things, yeah. but it's just a salad, right? It's all these emotions that come into play. And then, because they're feeling uncomfortable with your choice, 
then they become either, I like to call it either the joker, they make jokes, comic relief, right? To make themselves feel better. They yep. become the bully where they poke fun, make fun of you and are mean, or the debater who has to debate like every single thing that you say. It's like, <laughs> even if they agree, they're gonna find the other side <laughs> and they're yeah, gonna yeah. debate with you. So like they say these things to buffer their own discomfort with the fact that you just chose a salad. And when it boils down to it, it's like, really, it doesn't matter. It's, it's the act of eating together and enjoying that time and the connection. So it shouldn't matter what you eat, even though it does, which is kind of sad. But yeah, including the family, that would have been my, one of my tips. Like, make it fun. Have some fun. <laughs> 100%, 100%. Um, and also, so kind of to, to kind of piggyback off that, but um, I mean, one thing I would say is, yeah, I think choosing the, the energy that you want around you, like, you know, surround yourself with, with your family, your loved mm -hmm. ones, the people that are giving you good energy that mm -hmm. support you and, you know, want your best, you know, at heart. And so, yeah, I mean, definitely the people you surround yourself with is huge when it comes to enjoying this lifestyle, but really just enjoying life in general, like anything in life. Um, you want to be surrounded by supportive, you know, good energy people. So, um, but also my other point was, you know, get excited about getting to know yourself on a deeper level. Ooh, I like because, that. Yeah, this, this lifestyle, I think maybe more than any other lifestyle because it goes against so much of what mm -hmm. society and what our culture is about um, that you can no longer like hide in the crowd, you know, like mm -hmm. you're going to be singled out, unfortunately, but I think yeah. it's a good thing because it really allows you to, to understand who you are as an individual and what your true, you know, interests and passions and desires are. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important to get excited about this entire process and to really, you know, have compassion for yourself and, and really, um, you know, explore the thoughts and the emotions and, and all the things that come up as you're going through the process of, you know, potentially feeling like a bit of an outcast and, mm -hmm. you know, having to navigate the, the social situations of, you know, eating differently than people. Um, and, and for me personally, I think it has really helped my, my self-esteem, mm -hmm. my confidence, um, just my, my relationship with myself and, and with my food, you know, it, it's just been transformative in so many positive ways, mm -hmm. even though there have been obviously some uncomfortable situations socially and, you know, mm -hmm. getting into debates with my old friends about how I'm not going to get enough protein and all this sort of stuff. And so, yeah, I mean, there's going to be a few challenges, but I think it's important to look at that as an opportunity to learn and to grow and to really just make a better connection with yourself and your intuition. Mm -hmm. I love that one. That is such a good, like, tip for the for making it fun and exciting because it's so true we're growing we're always growing and uh, also to piggyback on that one is um to release the need to be perfect mm, yeah. that makes it funner because when you are stuck in this need to be absolutely 100 percent pure and perfect that causes tons of unnecessary stress on you um especially if like every single person is, has a different microbiome. Mm -hmm. And I always bring it back to that because it's like such an important part that I feel like a lot of people are missing, right? Yeah. I, because it's new science, right? So it's new science right. so people are gonna be like, eh, you know, with it. But it's like, let's, let's go back to that forgotten organ, right? Every yeah. single microbiome is different. And some people can jump right into the raw diet and just do totally fine because their gut is decent, right? And can handle yeah. the amount of fiber and variety. But other people have weaker microbiomes and they need to go really slow. They need to start with what works and then slowly add like little amounts of new things in. Like if broccoli irritates, add that slower, right? Like, but release the need to be absolutely perfect according to somebody 
on on the internet or whoever you've seen right like it's like just work with your body not against it like don't force it into something that doesn't feel comfortable or pressuring yourself to be some kind of like ideal pure and perfect thing yep. that makes it stressful and that makes it hard to stick to because you're like forcing yourself into this it's like go slow right like we don't go to the gym and then all immediately start lifting 80 pound weights, right? Like it's right. just, you don't do that, right? You start slow, you start with the fives. And some people have to start with the threes, right? <laughs> like you gotta go slow, work with your muscles, yep. work with your microbiome. And it, it, like you said, it's challenging your body to grow in some way, in all ways. Like you're ch you, we challenge our brains by reading books and studying stuff. We challenge our lungs by doing breath work. We challenge our heart by doing, you know, walking or running or whatever. We train our cardiovascular system. We, we uh, challenge our bones by doing like weight bearing exercise, right? We can challenge our gut as well. Like it's like not an exclusive organ, right? We can challenge our gut by giving it little bits at a time so it grows and we can just become like better but without jumping in and like expecting miracles and everything right off the bat, yeah. that can be really stressful. And I know a lot of people do that. They'll, they'll go so far in that it's too far. It's like an elastic band. Like they go so far in that they just snap back because it's too much too soon and they can't do it. But right. to, to make it more enjoyable, go with your body's pace, like listen more to your body instead of the internet, like use the internet as a source of inspiration for mm -hmm. sure. But like, come back to who you are and where you are in your life. Cause we're all at different phases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally agree. Um, I actually had, uh, don't put too much pressure on yourself. It's perfect <laughs> is one of mine as well, but I have a backup to that. Nice. Um, cause I, yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you. You know, the perfection mindset is, I think it holds people back more than it helps them. And so I just, yeah, I think having compassion for yourself, understanding that it is a journey. It's, it's a long-term commitment to yourself and to, you know, working with your body to reach your goal, your health goals. And, and yeah, it's, it's not going to happen overnight. I, when I was talking to Nate the other day, I, we, I brought up the example. I don't know if you've seen, there's like this graphic or this picture out there where there's two people standing and they're, they're next to these two ladders that are right next to each other. And one ladder has these steps that are like super far apart, right? So oh, yeah. kind of symbolizing somebody that takes giant leaps and wanting to be like, take very few steps to get to their destination. And the other one is a person with, there's, the ladder has just a ton of little mini steps and, and they can obviously get to the top more faster than the person that has the big steps. So yeah, I think taking small steps, um, you know, my first YouTube channel is actually called Small Steps to Success. Oh. And, <laughs> you know, so that, yeah, I've always been about making, you know, small steps towards your goal. Um, you know, whether you feel like it's such a tiny insignificant step to take, as long as it's towards the goal that you're wanting, you know, take that little mini step and that's going to help you get to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the perfection thing, you know, we're always learning, we're always discovering new things. So what we think today is perfect might not be perfect tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. Might not be perfect in a year from now. So yeah, it's really just being um, flexible and, and adapting to the new information that, that we're coming across and, and mm -hmm. also listening to your intuition. Kind of mm -hmm. like you pointed out, you know, you, you got to come back to, to yourself as well. And, and just, you know, what resonates with you, I think, is, is the way that you should go. But always take into account multiple points of view that, mm -hmm. you know, you can weigh and you can take what you want and leave what you don't want. And then mm -hmm. you build your own ladder of success, right? You, you take the steps to, to the location or the health, you know, goal that you want to get to um in in the way that uh, is working for you and if it's not working then you know look to some of these other people mm -hmm. that are succeeding long term and and learn from their experience and yeah mm -hmm. i just think it's it's really just about being flexible and and just you know having fun with it and don't get too stressed out about being perfect yeah yeah definitely the stress about the perfect thing i love this one quote i think it was jim Rohn, but i don't know for sure but it it is um, 
you don't have to do everything, but don't do nothing. Yeah. Right. Like That's you great. don't have to do everything all at once, all off the bat. Right. Like people come right. in, they're like, okay, okay, tomorrow I'm going to drink my lemon water. I'm going to have a workout. I'm going to do my breath work. I'm going to do my meditation. I'm going to um, do this. I'm going to connect with friends. I'm going to make my food, blah, 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 blah. Like it's like way too much all at once. Yeah. Right. It's like start slow. Like maybe start with a smoothie for breakfast. Like let's, let's get that down first. Right. <laughs> start yeah. with whole food plant-based. I mean, like, let's master yeah. the vegan lifestyle right. and then slowly over time, add more raw, right? Until you get to a point where you're like, this is great. This is awesome. Try all raw, try, like, try the things and yep. see how you're feeling. And then just like move from there, but like master small things first. Mm -hmm. And then I love the, the book. Have you read ha uh, Atomic Habits? No, I, ha I that oh, sounds scary. Dude, that book is just so good like nate and i were listening to it while we we went to a, a concert in phoenix and cool. we listened to it the whole drive and we're like oh my god like it's one of those books that you can listen to like over and over and over again because there's so much gold in there highly yeah. recommend it atomic habits cool anyways yeah in atomic habits he talks about habit stacking mm. so it's like when you have a habit that you currently do every single day it's like clockwork you can stack a new habit onto that so like for example say every single morning you brush your teeth it's a given it's like totally automatic you don't even think about it yep. put like your workout put your toothbrush on your workout clothes yeah so it's like you're forcing yourself to be like oh yeah i'm working out today right so it's like training you to attach like a new habit onto an old habit and right. then you can habit stack and then once you do that you can be like put the workout clothes with your toothbrush on your meditate meditation pillow so it's like, well, you're going to meditate while, you know, like whatever, right? So you can have yeah. it stack and build it on there. And that can help to create the new you because we don't change unless we change. Yeah. Right. right. We have to change in order to change. It's just, <laughs> that's how it is. So yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, I totally forgot what I was I'm like, there's so many <laughs> No, <questions."> that's all <laughs> right. That was, that was gold in itself. I mean, yeah, that, that was so true. And I love, I love that idea. I, I've never actually, I've heard, I've heard somebody mention uh, habit stacking, but I didn't really understand what it was. So, mm. so yeah, that is a great idea. And, yeah. and I kind of do that. Like, I mean, not, I don't know if this is the same, but like to make sure that I drink my water in the morning, I'll put it in the bathroom. I'll put mm -hmm. my mason jar with water in the bathroom. So it's right there. Mm -hmm. And it's right. So I don't have to go down to the kitchen or, you know, find my water. I, it's just there. And I remember to drink it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think uh, doing little things like that to help you remember and to help make something a habit, you know, mm -hmm. and to help you change, like you said. Uh, yeah, I think that's brilliant. Yeah, so good. And I remember what my my next point was, was yeah. to take it one day at a time. Yeah, right. Like, that's one thing that people feel when they come into a new lifestyle or new diet is they feel overwhelmed with all the information. There's like, do this, do this. So someone says that and someone says this. And you're like, Oh, my God, blah. like, there's so much noise. Yeah. And so along with doing one thing at a time is to take it one day at a time. So focus only one day, like don't worry about being a raw vegan for five years or one month or 30, you know, like do this challenge or whatever, like just focus on today because today is really the only day that matters. And thank you to everyone who's in here spending their precious life with us, right? Like it's, it's, it's really amazing to have people here and, and Matt for you for hosting this, like it's, this is, this is our life that we're spending right now. Like right. we're experiencing, we're living it right now. And today is the only day that matters. But what we do today determines our future todays. Right. Right? So we, we have to like zoom it. Like instead of being so far zoomed out and being like, oh, well, I want to be raw for the rest of my life or whatever. Zoom into just today because today is really the only day. Write down what you're going to have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Plan out what you want to do. Who do you want to become? If you want to become a person who eats raw food, then you have to plan out the food that you're going to eat and you can practice being a raw foodie, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. you, like, it's just practice. And another thing on the perfectionism uh, topic is there's a reason why it's called a yoga practice and not mm -hmm. a yoga perfect. 
Yeah. Because you never get, there's, there's no level of perfection. Like you're constantly, even when you're at like a perfect level, you're still learning new things about your body. You're still like, you're maintaining or you're like exploring new movement. You're adding different things. Like there's never a level of perfection that you receive, right? It's all a practice. It's a daily practice, daily things that you do to become the person that you really want to be in order to be an athlete. Like you have to think about what athletes do. They train. So it's like, if you want to be an athlete, then you have to train. So what are you going to do? You're going to train. <laughs> so it's like just boiling it down to the one day and focusing one day at a time. That way you're more present as well. You're more present mm -hmm. in today because that's the only one that counts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, and it's so true. I mean, people see like sports athletes and things and, and they see how well they perform, you know, in game time, but they, mm -hmm. they don't see every single day that they're practicing over exactly. and over. They only got to that elite level by every single day working their craft. And mm -hmm. so if, if your craft, you want to make, uh, you know, being healthy or eating a healthy diet, you have to do that every single day to get to, you know, where it's, where you're like the LeBron James of the raw vegan diet or something like that. You know, you're the Michael Jordan. Um, you know, it takes daily consistent practice of these habits and of these actions uh, to really achieve what we all are wanting to achieve. And so, yeah, perfect point. Um, and, and I think also that, you know, one of my points was to, you know, take a, a, a challenge or something like, uh, I mean, that was I, my I, last point. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I We're on the same page. <laughs> I know. I love it. I love it. So yeah, like Lissa has a 52 to a new you program. Mm -hmm. You could do a 52. It's 52 weeks, right? Yeah. That's yeah. 52 year. weeks. Yeah. One year of, of guided, um, you know, practices that you can do through Lissa's 52 to a new you or she has, you know, a ton of meal plans out there you can follow. I've got my 21 day raw transformation program. And, and you can also I've got a five star seven day, or a seven day five star salad challenge. That nice. People can nice. Yeah, so yeah, there's just like all these little like challenges that you can use to get into the habit mm -hmm. of, of whatever it is you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And so I think really, you know, setting yourself up for success through uh, you know, putting yourself out there and, and putting yourself into these sorts of situations where, you know, you're, you're being guided, but at the same time, you're able to go, you know, uh, do it in a way that that's the most, you know, beneficial for yourself, because mm -hmm. everybody learns differently. So you have to figure out which uh, program or which source of information is going to help you the most. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, I, I, that's just one of my uh, keys is to definitely, you know, from from people that have been successful, look if they have some sort of like a, a guided program that you could use. And that mm -hmm. can be really helpful for, you know, giving yourself the confidence to make this lifestyle fun and exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And uh, for my challenge thing, um, it's a little twist. So that's cool. Like we got like the both sides of the challenge. Yeah. But mine would be um, to challenge yourself to like, see how many colors you can fit in your salad. Yeah. Or how many different varieties you can fit in your salad. Or like we had mentioned earlier, challenge yourself to try a new fruit. Challenge yourself. Um, also, like, one of the things Nate and I love to do is to take our salads on a hike and eat a salad on a mountain. And that's, that's, that could be a challenge for somebody. Like, how am I yep. going to do this? How am I going to carry it? Blah, 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 blah right? Challenge yep. yourself to do things that are out of the ordinary and make it happen, right? Like, like yeah, like taking it up there or um, like new things. What would be another one? Um, like... Nate's going uh, kayaking with his kids in Oregon next week. And nice. that's a challenge, right? To mm -hmm. how am I going to take the raw food in the kayak to the camp spot and like make it work, right? Yep. So it can be like some people can see that challenge as being frustrating and confusing and like, I don't want to do it because it's going to be too hard, mm -hmm. right? Or a challenge like say you, you have a family barbecue coming up challenge yourself like how am i gonna do raw like i want to do this like get into that mindset where it's gonna be fun 
to challenge yourself to do something totally out of the norm and make it work. Like our, our tailgate salads are a prime example, right? Like yeah. we, we challenge ourselves, like how are we gonna eat raw while we drive across the state? How are we gonna eat raw when we go backpacking up a mountain and stay the night? Like, how are we gonna do it? Let's, let's do it, let's make it work. And that can be fun. It can be fun if you make it fun. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, and, and it goes back to kind of what you were saying, like, you know, when, you, when you're on vacation or it's Friday or the weekend and you, you have like that, that energy within you, like, mm -hmm. oh, everything is so exciting. Yeah, you can put your, your mindset, you can embody that mindset anytime. Right. Mm -hmm. So there, there's times that I'll be walking around and I just practice doing this. It's like I like I'll be walking around. I'm in Minnesota. I just like tell myself, hey, I'm in Florida, you know, or something <laughs> like I just pretend like I'm in Florida. And, you know, you can you can generate that same sense of like excitement and mm -hmm. and spontaneity anywhere you are. And, and just like the raw lifestyle, you know, you can look at, you know, going kayaking with with raw food as like a huge hurdle that you know you just don't want to bother yourself mm -hmm. with but you can also look at it as an opportunity to you know learn how to you know travel with raw food and mm -hmm. and just you know ha have fun with it like you said and it's yeah it's just it really again comes down to the mindset mm -hmm. yep and that's the practice that's the what people call the transition period right like i yep. transition is a tricky word because people use it to continue justifying what they were doing before. They're like, well, I'm in transition, so I'm still, still gonna put the cheese on my salad. It's like, yeah. well, if you're transitioning to become a vegan, we'll just use that as an example. Yeah. You, you decide, you're like, I'm gonna transition to vegan. So what does a vegan do? This is your transition phase. It's practice. Like you're practicing how a vegan would choose and your transition period is over when it's natural habit. You just go into the restaurant and you order the salad without cheese without thinking. Like it's just automatic. That's when you know your transition period's over. But the transition period is that uncomfortable state where you have to consciously be aware of your new habits that you're trying to create. Right. And you're consciously aware, like when you go to the restaurant, you have to make the choice that a vegan would choose. Like what would a vegan choose? And that's the challenge. And people don't embrace it as much as they maybe should when they're moving over to any new habit or new diet or lifestyle. They don't realize that that is the transition. The transition is the actual practice of making the choices that a raw vegan would make, that a vegan would make, that an athlete would make, that a business owner would make. Like you have to actually make those choices in yeah. order for the new lifestyle to become your new reality. Like for me, and uh, I'm assuming for you too, cause it's been so long, it's like so automatic. You're like, I don't even think about it anymore because that's our new habit. We've created new grooves in our like neural pathways where it's like, this is just what you default to. And people ask me all the time, they're like, well, when do the cravings go away? That's like, well, cravings don't ever really technically go away because your neural pathways never disappear. They don't get used, but they still exist and they always will. And a craving is really just our frame of reference that we've had from the past, what we habitually always ate. So like, if you're hungry, which everyone's gonna get hungry, even when you're raw vegan, you get hungry. <laughs> like, it's not like a big surprise, like, oh, we should never be hungry. It's like, no, everybody gets hungry because we need fuel, right? So hunger is never going away. But what happens is when we're hungry, we crave, and we're always gonna crave what's easy, what's habitual, what's convenient, what our friends are eating, like all, we're gonna crave that stuff and we already know it. But when we start to do these like daily practices, it shifts and you start to crave the things that you're habitually doing, right? Like a crave like this, Nate made this amazing smoothie for me this morning. Mm. It's like a, um, a cacao, barley grass juice, banana date, deliciousness mm. it's so good but it's wow. like that's what like you you think about that like i crave like dragon fruit in the morning or like right. when mangoes and nectarines are so good right now it's like like we want those foods because that's our new habit that's our new neural pathway that we've created and it's, it just becomes default so it really isn't like some magical day all your cravings go away right like you have to eat food so that you don't have yeah. cravings but 
with time, everyone's going to be different. It depends on repetition. We were listening to Jim Rohn also like the other day, and he was saying, it's when people ask, how long does it take to make a new habit? It's not how long it takes. It's how many repetitions mm. that create the new habit. And I loved that because like yeah. somebody could be doing a new habit once a week for two or three months and yep. be like, I still don't, I, I'm not in the habit or whatever. But the other person who did it almost every single day is going to be way more into the habit, but they did it for the same amount of time. So it's not time, it's repetitions. It's how many times do you choose raw? How many times do you choose vegan? How many times do you choose to go for your workout? That's what creates it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100% agree. Uh, and I love Jim Rohn. Mm -hmm. Guys, I've, I've listened to probably a year's worth of just nonstop, <gasps> just Jim Rohn. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's, he's one of my favorites. Uh, the other kind of in line with, um, you know, the challenging yourself another thing that i really think it, it's helped me anyways be, it was so going into like a seminar or like a certification course or you know a meetup even like a fruit lock or something a retreat like woodstock you know you can go you can go to some of these events um like i did a three-week uh, uh, raw food chef course in Atlanta at the Graf Academy of Raw Food Education. Nice. Um, and I, I also did uh, Dr. Morse's level two certification course in Florida. And both of those experiences were completely life changing. Like mm. some of the most memorable, um, you know, fun experiences I've ever had, like hanging out with people that are like minded, that are just so interested in improving their health and, and just like, you know, learning about the body and things um, and, and learning how to make delicious raw food and share it with people. Uh, yeah, it, it was it was like so transformational, like mentally going to those two things. And I haven't been to Woodstock, but I imagine it's the exact same. You know, you just people have such life changing experiences at, at that event and other events like it. So that's another way that you can, you know, increase the amount of excitement and fun with fuel the, the fire <laughs> yeah fuel that fire with with those sorts of things and and you know you'll make likely you'll make um lifelong friendships mm -hmm. and and just connections that you know will change your life and mm -hmm. so i think getting in you know putting yourself into those situations can really help long term you want to develop friendships and and experiences like that but also you know just get yourself in the mindset to see what's possible because mm -hmm. you know when i went down to my certification course for raw food um it was just like you know seeing people that have been doing this for such a long time and they're so healthy um you know i just it, it was like just reaffirming to me that you know you can you know do this lifestyle in a successful way. And so, um, yeah, I just think going to these events can be super helpful, both mentally and socially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And speaking of the festival, I mean, that's how I met Nate. Like right. if it hadn't been for that festival, he never would have gotten in contact with my friend Jack, who then connected us. And then we had our interview. We fell in love. We even got married at the festival. Like, yeah, it's 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 really cool to connect. And on that note as well, like with the education, that's another way to fuel right. the fire and get excited. Nate and I actually are starting Dr. Rick and Karen Dina's raw food education. It's a year long program of weekly classes. We got textbooks and all kinds of stuff. Like we're like, let's go back to school shopping, right? Because it's like a whole year worth of schooling yeah. on raw food. And we've been saving up for years to do this. And mm -hmm. so we're really, really excited to learn from them. And of course, like no one's ever going to agree with absolutely 100% of what everyone else says, right? Like right, right. it's about learning from their perspective and taking it with a grain of salt and being like, that makes sense. And maybe that doesn't really make sense. And like, why? And then diving yeah. more into like other angles and and that's the beauty of growth and education, right? Like we can yeah. learn more. So we're excited to do the schooling and that's it. Yeah, that's so true. It's another way to get excited about mm -hmm. the raw food thing. <laughs> 
Yeah. And I'm glad you said that because I actually, I had Dr. You know, the Dina's uh, course on my list here to mention because yeah, I, I heard that you were going to do that. And that's so cool. That's actually on my list of things to do as well. I, I love things like that. You know, I love, even though you know, I've been doing this lifestyle for 11 years, it's just like, there's still so much to learn, right? And there's, there always please, will be. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. always something to learn. Mm -hmm. And and even just to, you know, reaffirm and to just, um, you know, solidify a lot of these different things that, you know, you might know, but, you know, you don't know fully, like, yeah. you know, some about it, but you don't know the full depth of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so just going to these sorts of, um, you know, courses and, you know, classes and things, it can be so helpful to give yourself the knowledge and the confidence moving forward to, mm -hmm. you know, especially that's why I feel like, you know, a lot of people, they see, um, you know, anti-vegan, you know, mm -hmm. rhetoric out there that confuses them because mm -hmm. they don't have the solid foundation of information and education to understand, you know, human anatomy and physiology and, and what we need to thrive. Mm -hmm. And so if they don't have that and they see some, you know, keto person saying that you shouldn't eat carbs, um, they're not going to really understand, you know, why that's not right, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's great to get that source of education and to continually be a student, right? Mm -hmm. Continually learn and, and be curious about, you know, enhancing what you already, or what you know, mm -hmm. uh, to, to a, a new level. Yeah. And embracing all the new information that's coming in yep. because that's how we evolve as a society. I mean, there's a reason we don't do a lot of things that we did in the past because it's <laughs> like we learn, we're like, okay, there's this new thing, but new things are always kind of like, eh, in the beginning because people are so stuck in their ways and they're like, no, this yep. is the way, this is what works, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, well, let's, let's like expand a little more here and like embrace some of the new stuff that's coming out because with time, that's going to be the new norm eventually. So it's like, let's, let's move with it. Kind of like social media and technology. It's like when yeah. Instagram came out with reels, you're like, well, I guess I'm doing reels, right? <laughs> because it's like, I got to move with the times. We yeah. can't be so stuck and fixed. Like it's good to be fixed in like certain ideals and stuff like veganism, for example, for me is fixed. Like that's never right. changing, but within veganism, right? Like I'm flowy and I understand and I want to accept the new science and I want to grow and learn and all that kind of stuff too. And it's never ending. Like you say, it's never ending. Um, and on that note, another thing I wanted to say is to uh, explore like others, like watch YouTubes and, and that can really inspire people as well. Join groups like Facebook groups and stuff and yeah. connect with other people. Like you were mentioning the festivals and stuff like, or, or meetups and things like explore that as well, because that can also help remind you why you're choosing this. Like, what are your whys? Like go back to those original reasons. Like, why did you want to choose this in the first place? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Totally agree. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that that's all of my that's all of what I had prepared. Do you have cool. anything else that on your list? I do. I have one more. Um, okay. My last tip would be to uh, explore new tools. Mm. Like get get creative in the kitchen. Like find ways to make your prep uh, faster. Because some people, for, it can be overwhelming when it's not your lifestyle, like your or your practice your daily practice you might be like oh my gosh it takes forever to chop a salad or well you know like it, it can be overwhelming if it's not your normal yep. so explore tools and like new things that you can get like if you don't have a high-speed blender i highly recommend getting one because they're amazing yep. and if you don't have a vacuum blender i highly recommend getting the the step up like get the vacuum blender um getting like little chopping tools or a food processor or some way to kind of like make your prep faster and learn how to make prep faster like for example as i always tell people a great tip is when you're chopping your salad for lunch or dinner chop double the amount and just put it in a container for the next meal like you'll be so happy you'll be like oh my god i'm so glad i have to chop again right like so if you're chopping for lunch chop for dinner as well even though you might have different ingredients chop like the basic stuff like chop your lettuce chop your kale chop your endive and radicchio whatever else you want to put in there 
you don't have to necessarily chop like tomatoes or cucumbers because they're kind of watery, but like all the other stuff, grate your carrots, right? Or shred your cabbage, like do enough so that you can compensate for those next days. And double batch of dressing is like mm. massive game changer. So it's like you're yeah. blending your dressing for lunch, blend a dr double batch and you have lunch for tomorrow, done. And you'll have to do it again, right? So then your prep becomes faster and then you enjoy it more because you're not spending all the time in the kitchen, at least you're like trying right. to save a little bit. So that would be my last tip is like, learn prep, like, like really get into a groove with it. Yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. I completely agree. And, I, and I'm all on board with that double batch of dressing. I do the same thing. Yeah, it, it's such it's just like, it doesn't take that long to do it. But when you don't have to do it, it just mm -hmm. feels like such a relief, right? So You're like there's dressing in the fridge, I can just pour it on the salad I already chopped. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think yeah, I think that's huge, especially for like the newer people that mm -hmm. that are trying to learn so many new things. And yeah, it just makes one less thing for you to have to do if you make some extra salad and extra dressing that you can have, you know, later or that next day. Um, yeah, great, great point. Um, and then also, I guess one other thing that I was um, gonna say <laughs> is to make like, have fun making your old favorites like in a raw form like, you know, Lissa is again, like the queen of doing this. She knows how to turn any like, typical standard recipe into a raw vegan recipe. And so I mean, it's, it's amazing how, you know, you can really reenact some of these different recipes that mm -hmm. people love. And that's another, you know, exciting and fun thing that you that you can do is is start, you know, making some of your old favorites in a raw way and, and mm -hmm. see how you like it. Yeah, totally. And you don't have to do it all the time. Like people are like, Oh, my God, it's gonna take forever. It's like, well, I mean, so does Thanksgiving dinner. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. there's some things that take time, no matter if you're raw or not. It's like, it depends on what you want, how much time you have to invest in it. So like, when people see our salads, they're like, oh my God, those salads must take forever. And I'm like, well, it's the fastest thing to make because like <laughs> sometimes the other stuff, it does take planning, but really it's the planning that's the key. It's not really the prep because the prep is easy. It's the planning. So when people open a recipe book and they're like, they're, they're, they haven't planned their day. This is like another thing. Like you have to plan your day because if you don't plan your day, you don't get the prep that you need in, especially on raw. So like you're winging it and you get home from work and you're like, oh, I wanted to eat a raw dinner. And you open a book and you're like, oh, I had to soak my cashews for six hours, right? They're like, ah, and then they just don't even bother. Yeah. It's like if you planned your day and you're like, well, I want to have this cashew ranch dressing for dinner. Oh, and I have to soak my cashews. Like you're going to soak your cashews before you go to work, right? Or have them soaking in the fridge so that they're ready for you at dinner time. But it's really those like nuances, learning how to add the prep in to your day. Like, oh, I, I need sprouts for this one meal. So three days, like I'll have it on Friday and on Tuesday, I'll start soaking my seeds so I have sprouts on Friday, right? There is a little bit of planning. It seems overwhelming, but it's really not. Because if you plan it out, you're like, Tuesday, I have to soak my, my sprouts. All it is is 10 seconds. You just yeah. put the sprouts in the jar and soak them. Like it's easy, right? And then the next three yeah. days, you're just rinsing and draining, which is another like 10, 20 seconds, yep. right? So like, there's not a lot of actual prep work. It's the planning. So learning to plan is so key to doing yeah. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Planning and following through. Yes. You know, like, kind of like, kind of like people that, you know, they, they leave a, like, they'll put like one dish in the sink and then they'll put another dish in the sink. And pretty soon you, you got a big pile of dishes. <laughs> and it's like, if you just did them right away, you know, if you just followed through with knowing, Hey, if I just, wash my dish right away it's going to be so much easier in the end to you know keep my dishes clean mm -hmm. so if you know there's little steps you can take each day that you know aren't going to take that much time but if you kind of leave it and you just never do it it's going to build up and mm -hmm. it's going to be overwhelming so yeah mm -hmm. just following through and, and planning is is key for yeah this lifestyle and really a lot of things in life oh yeah i know it's like Basically, when people always ask me, they're like, what's the key to life or whatever? I'm like consistency and planning and patience. Yeah. Those three, right. they get you everything, like whether it's yeah. business, whether it's your athletic stuff, your diet, your relationships, like your self work, all it is is 
planning, consistency, and patience. It's really all you need. Yep. You just have to, but you, well, like you say, you have to take action on that stuff. Like you can't be consistent if you're not doing it. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. That. All right, cool. So should we get into some of the Q&A? Yes, please. All let's right. do it. All right, here we go. <laughs> So it looks like there's quite a few questions Woo! here. Nice. All right, let's see. And thank you, Sherry, for putting a lot of these questions in from, uh, from what people were putting in the chat. I appreciate you as always. All right, so it looks like Jazizi says, can you give a shout out to Katie, Craig, and John, pretty please? Sure Aw, hey, shout hey, out. Katie. <laughs> hey, Katie, Craig, and John. So glad to have you joining the show and I hope you're learning lots. Hope you're getting inspired. Um, yeah, so thanks for being here. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, next question is from, oh, okay. Um, Easy Breezies was asking about your microbiome tests. Um, I, I, they just said, what are these tests? Uh, yeah, so, so, to briefly talk about it, this is the gut health test. It's from Ombre Lab. This is the one that I'm doing next week. Um, what you do is you get, I'm just gonna show you guys what's inside here. So first up, you have to activate your test. If you don't activate it online in your account, then they can't give you your results. So you have to activate it and you get codes and stuff so that you can activate it. But what happens is you, you get this little box and it's got a prepaid Thing. So once you do it, you just drop it in the mailbox and it ships right to them. So inside you get swabs, swabs, and it, don't worry, it's not scary. It's really easy to do. <laughs> um, you get this little vial. So you get this little vial with this liquid inside. And what you do is in the morning, you have your bowel movement. And while you're doing the bowel movement, take a little, like use some toilet paper and take a little sample of it. Then you use, you don't want it to touch the water because if it touches the water, then there's going to be like other bacteria and kind of some weird stuff in there too. So you don't, you want it to be as sterile straight from your butt as <laughs> soon like, as possible, right? So yeah. I like to like take a clump on, the, on a Kleenex and then you open this and you take one of their little um, selectors and you select a rice size sample that hasn't been exposed to anything else, not even the Kleenex. Take a rice size sample. You don't need a lot. So like it's a tiny, tiny little bit. And then you put the applicator into here and you mix it for about a minute. Like you really give it a really good mix and it becomes kind of like foamy and frothy and thick. Then you put that into this little bag. You put it into this box. You use, there's like a seal on here. So you just peel the seal, seal it up and then drop it in the mailbox. Then after about two and a half weeks, then they will update your account because you're supposed to activate it. So once you activate it in your account online, they will give you your test results and they'll give you a percentage. You have like, you can compare it against other people's stuff. It gives you like symptom charts and like all, there's like so much information in there and they're changing as the science comes in they change their platform and they give more information based on like new studies that come in. So it's a really cool comprehensive test that you can do at home. It's only like a hundred bucks. So, and they have a lot of sales on. So like this test that I got was only 50 because I, I used a, a special coupon code that they have. And we originally got our first tests on black Friday when they had like a 50% off sales. So we're like, let's do it. Right. And now we're like, totally into it it's great so that's basically the test ombre lab is the one we use but biome is another one that's really good very cool yeah all right yeah i i definitely want to get one of those tests so i'm gonna i'm gonna do that yeah it's fun i mean like you know it's just interesting <laughs> yeah i i agree i'm fascinated by the microbiome i think it's really cool all right let's see here uh, what are your thoughts? This is from Jadel Emanuel. What are your thoughts on simplicity and mono mealing for optimal health? Hmm. My thoughts. <laughs> um, uh, so I have a little bit of an unpopular opinion on this one, <laughs> but, um, okay. This is just, like, I believe that there is value in it for sure. Um, for people who have 
weaker microbiomes, right? So some people need to be on a more limited thing, but it's not meant to be forever. That's just my opinion. We're meant to grow from that, right? We're meant to, like we say, explore new foods and add more new foods. And a lot of people will eat something like one of my salads and they'll, they'll get gassy, bloated, they'll feel uncomfortable and everything. And it's like, it's not the food that's the problem. Right. right. It's not the complexity that's the problem. It's the gut microbiome that isn't currently ready to digest that amount of complexity and stuff. Right. So as much as like like we will eat like we'll sit and eat like six nectarines as a snack. Right. Mm -hmm. We had uh, a melon before our workout this morning. So like we do eat like simple meals, I guess you could say. But in my mind, simplicity isn't limiting. Mm -hmm. Simplicity to me means the least amount of processing possible, yeah. right? Yes. So I, my salads may look big and complex and like full of stuff, but it's actually a simple salad because yeah. I'm not processing anything in it. It's just food, right? It's just chopped, mm -hmm. right? So that's kind of like where I stand on it. I believe that there are certain times where it can be beneficial to learn about how slowly you need to add stuff back into your diet to grow and expand mm -hmm. but it's not something to stay there it's akin to um nate and i actually were talking about this on our walk it's like laying on the couch laying on the couch feels good it does right and yeah. nobody on the planet who understands muscle growth is gonna say oh i went to the gym and I did those squats and today my butt hurts. So that means that the squats were bad. No one in the right mind says that, right? No. We, we have to challenge, like challenging our cardiovascular system is uncomfortable, right? We yeah. have to go and like run, <laughs> do the thing <laughs> to make our heart work stronger, right? Breath yep. work can be difficult, right? Like you're, if you're doing with Wim Hof, it's something that you have to work up to. And it's the same with our gut. Like our brains don't get a rest ever. Like even when we're dreaming, it's not resting. It's actually more active when we're sleeping. Our yeah. brains don't get a rest. Our heart doesn't get a rest. If our heart got a rest, we wouldn't be alive. Our lungs don't get a rest. That too. We don't yeah. like, we don't get a rest. Our gut microbiome is no different. Our digestion is no different. We still need to eat food and get fuel and all this stuff. So in a way, it's like the growth can be uncomfortable for some people, but that's why we don't go to the gym and start lifting 50 pound weights, right? right. We don't you like start, we don't dive in and we're like, oh, let's have this big, giant, massive, uh, complex salad. If that's not your norm, you mm -hmm. have to work up to it. So start with that space start with what's simple and easy and then slowly add in to what feels comfortable and for some people that starts as slow as like one tablespoon of broccoli in mm -hmm. their salad right and do yeah. that for like you could do that for months and then work up to two tablespoons and then add a different food in right like a tablespoon of cabbage just to get the variety in there to start growing some microbiome colonies and stuff so yeah i like i understand the benefit and and why but I also understand the value of multiple of multiple variety in your food. So it's kind of like, it's a touchy subject and I know like it's not popular opinion, but <laughs> <laughs> it's mine. So yeah, yeah. that's my opinion. <laughs> cool. Yeah, no, I, I completely, you know, resonate with that. I, mm -hmm. I agree. There's, I think, I think there's a time for, for both, but mm -hmm. you know, personally, so yeah, I also will mono meal, pretty much once a day, like for lunch, I usually just have one type of fruit, right? Like a big watermelon or, you know, some peaches or whatever. Um, but yeah, in my salad, I definitely go, you know, it, like you said, it's, it seems kind of complex because there's multiple ingredients, but they're, they're unprocessed. It's just mm -hmm. uh, different vegetables going in. It, I don't consider that like, com you know, I don't think I would still consider that a simple salad. Mm -hmm. um, I personally don't get excited about continual mono mealing. Mm -hmm. Like I did that in the mm -hmm. past. I, I was big into, you know, mono mealing and things, but it just personally, I didn't gravitate towards that. I enjoyed mixing different things and my digestion, you know, has been fine, 
you know, mm -hmm. my, di my digestion is terrific. Like it's never been this good. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I, I agree. And I don't think that it's like one or the other. I mm -hmm. think both have a place and, you know, some meals can be simple and, and mono meal and some can be more complex. And, and I think, you know, each person probably has to figure out what, you know, combination of each they, they feel the best with. Mm -hmm. And, but otherwise, you know, I think it's, it's just part of life is just uh, exploring and, um, you know, seeing what works for you and yeah, um, mm -hmm. do a little bit of both, see what feels best. And, uh, yeah, but I, I do think that, you know, in order to get all the different colors, like, cause I'm big on getting colors, right? Me too, so me too. one of the, yeah, it's one of the pillars of my five star salads is you gotta have at least five different colors in your salad. And to do that, you gotta have different types of fruits and vegetables, right? And so, yeah, I just think that uh, you, you, gotta, you gotta do both. I think that both is, is balance. Life is about balance, I think. And if you get all one, you know, all mono meals, I think you can run into issues. Mm -hmm. And if you're always eating, you know, I guess maybe heavier, more, you know, more digestive intensive things, you know, maybe it wouldn't be so well. But I think a mix of both is, in my opinion, you know, the, the way that works best for me anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I agree too. It's like, it really depends. It's like your variety throughout the whole day, really yeah. is like what I look for. And Again, like we were talking about like playing the games, like Dr. Will has this point system. So it's like, I like the other day I had like 17 different things in my salad and it was fun. Like I enjoyed it and it digests completely fine for me, but because I've worked up to it. So right. not everyone's going to be able to do that at the moment. And it doesn't mean that like they're bad or whatever. Like people always put labels on stuff. It's like, well, I can't do that. So I must be meh, right. And it's like, no, you yeah. have the potential. We all have the potential to grow our microbiome so that they can be stronger and deal with other things. And along the lines of like food combining, that's, I feel like food combining is very personal. Is yeah. very personal. Like there's all these charts and stuff and I never, I, I'm really kind of a rebel in like the rule arena. It's like, I don't want to follow that. I'm going to listen to my body and see like what feels best. And like I, Nate can't do um, mangoes and papaya. Mm. He has to do the papaya by itself. I can do mangoes and papaya and dragon fruit and all kinds of other stuff together just fine. Yeah. But that's just me and that's him. So it's like we just because he can't do it doesn't mean that I have to follow the same rule. Right. right. So I feel like that's another thing that comes into play, too, is that we have to, like, listen to our own body instead of just following a chart like it's like black and white. Like you have to do it this way. Otherwise, it won't heal. And I, I'm not a fan of absolutes. Like, yeah, me neither. this will heal everything. Like, you will heal 100% guaranteed, all of blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that's kind of doing a disservice to people because all raw food is, is a support for the system. Yep. It's a support. It's something that you get, you're gifting your body this. And some people will heal and have miraculous things and other people might not. But it's not about having to heal. It's about not getting worse doing the same thing that you always were doing right like supporting yeah. the body so yeah it's it's an interesting subject that's for sure <laughs> it is yeah i know and, and i completely agree I, i've always been that way about food combining mm -hmm. i use you know i've got like a, a food combining chart but i always tell people like this is just a general guide mm -hmm. it's going to be different for every single person because everybody has a different microbiome everybody else you know they have there's so much more than just food that, that mm -hmm. goes into your digestion, you know, your, your psychology, your environment. So, How you so chew. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So many things that, that play a part in, in digestion. And so, yeah, just looking at one specific thing and saying that has to be how you do it isn't, you know, accurate from, from my perspective, from what mm -hmm. I've seen. Agreed. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm on the same page with you on that. Um, yeah, good question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I like, I like the idea of follow or it's uh, listen to all follow none. So just like you said, you need to listen to your own body and your mm -hmm. intuition. I, I love listening to all different, you know, sorts of people, you know, to learn what they're sharing. Mm -hmm. And then I don't blindly follow anybody 
even even my most like um pillar people that I've learned from, I don't agree with 100% of what any of them say, right? Exactly. So they're, they're, I, I kind of have like an 80-20 rule. Yeah. Usually the people that I learn from, I'll agree with like 80% of what they say will resonate with me. And 20% just is not mm -hmm. working. Like I just, it doesn't line up with my thinking. And so Agreed. I leave that 20% and I take the 80 and I form my own personal best way of doing this. Mm -hmm. And so like, I'm not gonna, you know, get, I'm not gonna just throw the, the watermelon out with, I, don't know, <laughs> I, I can't think of a good analogy. The, the, the grapes out with the grape water, or the, yes, when exactly. you're washing the grapes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, so yeah, I, I'm gonna take what resonates and leave what doesn't and move on, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm still gonna realize that, you know, even if they have these different opinions than I do, or something doesn't resonate with what I'm saying, there's still valuable content in what they're sharing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to take that and form, you know, what works best for me. And, and that's always been my approach. And it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's worked pretty well. I love that quote, listen to all but follow none. That is so good. It's so true, yeah. though. Yeah, because we put so much value in. And the thing is, too, like, there are people out there in every industry and in every idea in every theory there's always yeah. people out there who give just enough truth and then yep. when they throw in a lie you believe the lie too you're like oh well they said this is true and i know this is true so they must be true over here too but it's not right yeah yep so it's like really learning to discern between that and and if somebody like a mentor or a guru that you follow or whatever says something research it yeah. Learn why they said that. Like, because there's a lot of claims that go around, floating around all over the place. There's memes all over, right? And it's like people read it or they hear it and from a mentor and they're like, oh, yep. well, they must be true because they said it. And it's like, but why did they say it? Where did right. they learn it? What is the basis behind what they said? So like go beyond what they said and yep. learn more about the deeper root of why they said what they said because a lot of stuff is just regurgitated parroted around and like yep. everyone says it it's like well everyone says it so it must be true but that's not how we grow and learn right yeah. we have yeah. to learn and, and go deeper agreed yeah 100 mm -hmm. i think questioning even your your mentors and your teachers you know we all got to do that we can't just mm -hmm. you know blindly follow everything everybody says that we respect um, you can still respect somebody and disagree with them. And, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I think I think that's really uh, important for, you know, uh, true growth, true, and growth. True, true understanding of, mm -hmm. of what you what you believe, you know, you have exactly. to have that deeper uh, understanding. So. All right, let's see. Um, wow, a lot of questions in here. <laughs> okay, we'll try to do them faster. <laughs> yeah, right. We right. Like to talk. <laughs> um, okay, Morning Dove Glory says, what type of meditations do you guys recommend? Mm. I would have to say any meditation that you're going to do. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> because there's so many different ways to do meditation, and you really have to try sort of like some – you could do guided meditation, you could do breath work, you could do walking meditations, you could do affirmations, like you could do silence, you could chant, like you could do yoga, like there's so many different ways to do meditation. But it's like giving it a try and, and doing different styles to see what you're going to do and what you're going to stick to. Because if you don't stick to it, then it's kind of pointless, right? Like you have to actually yeah. do it like we were talking about. Yeah, 100%. I completely mm -hmm. agree. Yeah, the, the, the meditation that you're going to do consistently is the meditation that's best for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, and you don't have to look at meditation as the, you know, the standard what they say meditation is. I mean, I even consider just like making my salad a type mm -hmm. of meditation. Me too. Right? Me too. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, you can find it. And, and I think it's a lot, a lot of it is about like, um, you know, the silence um, you know, sometimes I like to listen to documentaries and YouTube videos while I'm making stuff, but sometimes I'll just not have anything play. Mm -hmm. And that way, because I, I think a lot of people go throughout every single day without ever having any silence mm -hmm. and they're always consuming something, whether it's YouTube or Instagram or 
you know, mm-hmm. music or TV. Um, you know, I think there's power in silence. Mm-hmm. That's probably, somebody's already made that quote, I'm sure, but. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> right. But it's just like allowing yourself to hear your own thoughts, mm-hmm. I think is an important part of, of in, internal growth and internal understanding and connecting with yourself. Um, so if, if you can just get like five or 10 minutes even to, to start, just like have silence where you can just like hear your own thoughts Mm -hmm. and, and that that's been helpful for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. I always remember, um, I think the book was called the miracle of mindfulness by Thich Nhat Hanh. And he, he talks about washing the dishes. He's like, you've got like so many mundane things that you do throughout your life, but we don't stop and like actually experience what we're doing like and he's like when you're washing the dishes a form of meditation is to like feel the bubbles and the soap and the dish and the water and the the temperature and like like become part of what you're doing and that's why i love that you said that the meditation is in the chopping of the salad because you're like connecting with your food that's something that we're so lacking in society we don't connect with our food and we don't connect with ourselves and having that moment where you can connect with yourself and your food at the same time in some silence yeah. and just like, yeah. And, and someone's asking how long do you meditations for as long as you want? Like there's people, I know people who are meditating like two, three hours a day. Yeah. Um, but it's really what works with your lifestyle. Um, what you're going to be able to do because it, again, consistency, <laughs> it's about <laughs> consistency. Yeah. hundred percent. All right. Okay. Next question. Oh gosh, where were we? <laughs> I always got to scroll back down. Okay. Um, have you tried Turkish sugar apricots? Whole new level of apricots you must try. Ooh, I have not. I have tried Turkish apricots, but not, not the sugar ones. Oh, yeah. Have I, to, yeah. See, that's like new varieties. Like now I'm like, now I got to go find those. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I've never had them either. I've had Tur- Turkish figs, mm-hmm. but um, I don't think I've had a Turkish apricot. So I'm going to look for that next time I go to the store. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. Lena Laloon says, your opinion on corn. Medical medium recommends to avoid it. I eat corn. <laughs> I actually don't follow medical medium. Um, I don't either. Again, it's like, they, they have some good stuff to say and then other stuff I, I don't resonate with. So I do what works for me and what I feel is best. I mean, we eat corn and the thing is like we chew it. Obviously you're going to look for organic corn for the most part because right. a lot of the corn is GMO, but like even then, like if we want corn, we're going to eat corn. <laughs> we're not going to like stress out about it. And on the, yeah. the organic note, like Nate and I don't eat all 100% organic. We eat a lot of organic, but mm-hmm. we don't eat all organic. And we don't stress ourselves out over it because yeah. when, you, when you're getting six mangoes for a dollar <laughs> and organic mangoes are a dollar each, you're like, well, yeah. you know, like in order to get the abundance and the variety, because you can't get everything organic in the variety yeah. that you want. So yeah, corn, I totally eat corn. I do apple yep. cider vinegar. I eat garlic and onions and I do all the things that people, <laughs> some people are like, yeah, don't do that. But I'm like, eh, it works for me. My gut's strong and you know, like I, I have lots of energy. I feel amazing. So yep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I'm the same way. Um, I'll, I'll eat corn. I usually just get frozen <laughs> corn. Sometimes like right now they've got uh, corn at, at the grocery store. So we've been, getting some some uh, ears of corn from natural grocers. That's where we usually get our produce from. Um, and luckily they are 100% organic at natural grocers, but mm. same with us. We, you know, like watermelon, I rarely get organic watermelon. I'll, I'll get conventional watermelon and avocados. And, mm-hmm. you know, th- there's, there's certain things that, that I will get non-organic. And so, yeah, I, I don't think it's something that we should stress out about, mm-hmm. I think again, everybody just has to do the best they can. It's, it's not about, you know, perfectionism and it's not about just following, you know, what somebody says you have to do. You know, it's, it's about being practical with what you can do with what, you know, options you have where you live, um, financial wise, you know, all that sort of stuff plays Mm -hmm. into it. So, 
again, just do the best you can. Um, I do eat corn. You know, it's not like a daily thing, but, you know, here and there I'll have it. And, yeah, I'd yeah. say it's like once or twice a month for us. Like we'll make, and, and the, the key would be mostly like, if you have issues with corn, chew it better. Chew your yeah. food better because like people are like, oh, I see it in the toilet. It's like, I don't, but I <laughs> chew it. <laughs> so it's like, you have to actually chew your food. Like yeah. that's your mouth's job. Digestion begins here. <laughs> And your stomach is like looking up at your mouth, like, come on, guys, like, uh, you got to pull your weight here. <laughs> yep, yeah, I know people. Yeah, people don't realize the stomach doesn't have teeth. Yeah, right? so <laughs> you don't chew it in your mouth. You know, it's, it's not going to get broken down fully mm -hmm. uh, and digest as well as it could have if you would have just taken the time to use mm -hmm. your teeth. Right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Tania asks, do you use sunscreen? Oh, I do. I know that again, I, I'm here, I'm the rebel. I'm like the unpopular. <laughs> the thing is, we don't always use sunscreen. We, we live in the desert and it's hot here, 114 right. to 117 in the summertime. Right. The sun is burning hot, like it's actually hot. <laughs> hurts your face hot. <laughs> yeah. But I believe like we use natural sunscreen and we don't always use it. Like we go mm -hmm. up, we have a pool on the roof and we'll go up almost every day and we lay out for like 15, sometimes a half an hour and nice. we do it without sunscreen. But if mm -hmm. we're going to be doing like a one hour walk or we're going out for a hike or we're spending all day outside doing stuff, we will use sunscreen because it's, I mean, like there's, there's that balance, right? It's yeah. like, I, I want to protect my skin, but I also want to make the vitamin D and it's like, <laughs> I, I, what about the toxins in the sunscreen and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, you know what? We live in an imperfect world. So be yeah. trying to be perfect, like not using sunscreen because you're scared of the chemicals and then getting sunburns. And mm. a raw diet doesn't get rid of sunburns. I'm sorry. Like everyone who says like, oh, if you eat a raw diet, you're never going to burn. That's not true. Yeah. You burn no. less, you mm -hmm. burn less. But if you're out in the sun for six, eight hours, I mean, it's inevitable. Like you cannot protect yourself 100%. So no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Um, yeah, I, I have gotten many sunburns being raw. So, and, and I eat a ton of fruits and vegetables, ton of hydration, you know, mm -hmm. all that good stuff. And, and I still, if I'm out in the sun for too long, I will burn. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I, I don't use sunscreen, but I, I basically, um, I, I do think that eating this type of diet does mm -hmm. help. Obviously. For sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, it doesn't yeah. prevent Nate's, you. Yeah, Nate's in the background. He's like, cover your skin. And that, that's like exactly. the best sunscreen, obviously, yep. is covering up. Yep. Um, that's what I do. when it, you can't yeah. cover up and when you really right. need that, and especially if you're not normally out in the sun, yep. um, it's like definitely you should like take those precautions if it's not normal. Like you get a lot of people who maybe spend their whole year in an office and then they go to Mexico for the summer. It's like, use some sunscreen, <laughs> you protect yourself. Because if it's not a normal thing, then you're more yep. likely to burn and... All yeah, oh, and Nate, Nate just said, he's like, I wanna be part of this. He says, uh, like, <laughs> Mexicans cover up. Like here in Vegas, we see yeah. a lot of like, um, ethnic worker, like Mexican workers and stuff, and they're, they're covered up. They wear yeah. long sleeves, they wear the big hats, like they cover yep. themselves to protect themselves from the sun. Cause you really, I mean, you have to respect the sun as much as right. we have to respect nature because it's powerful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know exactly this. The diet does not make us invincible. Yes, so thank you for yeah. saying that. <laughs> yeah. You, you have to be intelligent about, you know, some of these things like, mm -hmm. yeah, if, you know, depending on what route you want to take, you can use a natural sunscreen or mm -hmm. you can cover up or mm -hmm. you can do both, you know, mm -hmm. whatever you want to do. But I would say don't, don't uh, think that you can just spend all day in the sun and, and think that it's like you're going to somehow magically not get uh, burnt. <laughs> exactly. And it depends on skin tone too, right? Like if you yeah. have very, very fair skin, you have to take different precautions as somebody who has darker skin. You yep. really have to work with, again, it boils down to working with your body. Like you yep. know yourself best and you have to really take um, those precautions when necessary. Right. Yep, 100%. Mm. All right, um, let's see here. 
couple more questions. Um, let's see. Somebody said, would your gut biome test let you know if you had problems with corn, onions, garlic, mm -hmm. etc." That's a good question. So the gut test is not a food sensitivity test. And when it comes to food sensitivities, um, Dr. Will wrote a new book. It's called The Fiber Fueled Cookbook. And even though there's, there's like cooked vegan meals in there, there's also chapters with education. So it's, it's kind of like a mix between an informational book and a recipe book. It's a really cool book. But in there, he talks about food sensitivities. And he said that pretty much all food sensitivities can be overcome because it's not the food that's the problem, it's the amount of food that's the problem. So like if you're eating three ears of corn, obviously you're gonna have an issue with it, right? Um, if you're having issues with garlic, try using a quarter of the garlic or use yeah. garlic powder or freeze the garlic first because that inactivates some of the properties of garlic. Mm -hmm. So like you could try different forms of the food as well, which can be a little better on your system. But ultimately it's because the gut isn't ready for the amount. So you have to lower it down. And the food sensitivity tests, like they tell people to avoid foods, but avoiding certain things can play a, a detrimental role in the future because you're eliminating certain things that are really beneficial. So yeah. it's, it's more about the amount, but the gut tests themselves do not do food sensitivity. The gut test is testing the amount of bacteria that you have and the value the like the different colonies, the synergy, um, the different levels of certain bacteria that you have. It doesn't test for like candida or pathogens or parasites or anything like that. It only tests your good bacteria and how that bacteria flows in your gut. And then it gives you suggestions on foods to eat to boost certain ones that you might need a little bit of help with. So that's what the test is basically. Very nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so two more questions. Yes. Um, <laughs> All right, High Vibes Amy says, what would you respond to somebody who believes hydration from fruits is better absorbed than water? It's well, it's structured water. So I, I actually agree that yep. the fruit I water do. is better, but I also believe that water is essential <laughs> on yeah. top of the fruit. Oh, yeah, we are water-based machines as Nate Nate's like saying stuff in the background. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Um, we're water-based machines and we need water. Water is essential to life. And yep. even though we get a lot from our food, I still believe that we need to consume extra water on top of that. Um, especially living in the desert again, we need more water and your activity level also depends on your water intake too. Like if you are way more active, you're going to need to drink more water. So I feel like, Yes, you absorb water really good from fruit, but you also need water. So I'm kind of like, I agree with both um, areas of it. Nice, yeah, mm -hmm. same. I Exactly what I think as well. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see. Um, man, there's so many, sorry everybody, we're not gonna get to everybody's question, <laughs> but if we didn't get to your question, definitely you can DM either one of us if you mm -hmm. want, you know, to get that question answered. Um, if you DM me, we can potentially bring it up on a future show and we'll try and answer that. We try to collect the questions that we don't get to and get to them either on the next show or we just directly DM you uh, to let you know. Um, so yeah, so uh, apologize. There's just so many great <laughs> questions here. Right? And, and we appreciate the uh, interaction here. All right, so the final question, let's see. Let's pick out a good one here. Oh, Sherry wrote them all down. That's all, we should just come back and do another live and just answer questions. <laughs> I agree, I know, Sherry is my savior. Oh, Sherry is amazing, she is, she is just such an angel. Oh. All right, so uh, Carl, I think it's Carl, is saying, is there a percentage rule for mostly raw? Oh, good question. You know, um, I've thought a lot about this, like over the past like, couple years, like, what is my message 
on my on raw food romance like why am i here what am i talking about? like what am i trying to get people to do and it's like i'm not here to make raw vegans more raw vegan i'm not here to make vegans more vegan more perfect i'm not here to do that i'm here to inspire people to eat more raw food and yeah. there's like a lot of labels right like what is the exact perfect number of like what constitutes high raw and all raw and whatever like it, it's a, it's just a, a, a nuance a label it's like a um an insignificant thing that we're trying yeah. to like fit ourselves into a box when in reality it should just be like improving where you're at and adding more raw and exploring new varieties and just expanding yourself wherever you're at so i know like people want to fit into a label and want to say like well i'm all raw like i've heard so many different theories on it so and, it, and it's all perspective like people have different ideas i've heard it you have to be 100 percent raw um if you eat like cashews you're not raw or whatever like there's all these like ideas around yeah. and i've heard if you eat 70 percent of your calories from raw you can consider yourself a raw vegan but i know some 100 percent raw vegans who are like hey i don't like that right like <laughs> so it's like it doesn't matter that's all noise yeah. It boils down to adding more and working with yourself so that eventually you get to a point where you're eating the most raw foods that you want to eat. And whether that's all raw or 92% raw, and there's no way to determine the percentages. We can't yeah. determine it. It's like, it's, it's kind of a waste of time to like, yeah. oh, well, I eat like 83% raw and I've calculated it and everything. It's like, you should just go for a hike and enjoy some nature. Like, <laughs> get out of your okay. head, right? We overanalyze yeah. things too much. And really, it boils down to eating as much raw as you possibly can and just expanding on yourself every day um, and being respectful and gentle with yourself instead of trying to force yourself into an idea or a box or a label or something. Yeah, 100%. I completely agree. I think, yeah, it's what's whatever somebody can do um, that is sustainable mm -hmm. for the long term. And, and again, it's that ladder situation. Mm -hmm. You don't always have to take huge, massive leaps. You don't have to go 100% today, even if that's your goal in the future. Mm -hmm. Take it day by day, like Lissa said, and, you know, just make improvements. Just work mm -hmm. on progress. Progress, as Tony Robbins says, that is the key to happiness, mm -hmm. is making progress. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not any sort of like trophy or achievement. Once you have that, you know, if you don't continue to progress past that, you know, achievement that you've done, you won't continually have that same amount of happiness. And so you have to continually improve. You have to continually just be looking for ways to pro make progress in your life. And, mm -hmm. and the same goes with the raw diet. Like, mm -hmm. you know, just do, the best you can with your current circumstances and if you feel like in the future you want to be further along towards more 100 percent raw if that's what your goal is then you can continually put in the reps and you know make it a habit towards in adding more raw every single day mm -hmm. and, but don't don't put too much pressure on yourself mm -hmm. and because that's going to make this lifestyle not fun exactly right? it, and that was the fun. whole reason for our for the show today is making yes. it fun People yes. put so much pressure on themselves. And that's another reason why I don't like the absolutes because people are like, you have to be 100% raw or you're not going to heal. I know yeah. people who have healed who eat like 50% or less raw. Yes. And they've healed cancer on a plant-based yep. diet. It's like the whole idea of like being like a specific thing is way too much pressure. And you got to take the pressure off yourself because the pressure is what keeps you from getting to your goals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I know. Exactly. So <laughs> yeah, I love it. This has been truly an amazing and just fun conversation. I I've really enjoyed having you on. So thank you so much for taking your time. I mean, we're coming up on two hours. <laughs> I, I think I held Nate for two hours too. So yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. We so appreciate your time and, and taking, you know, your precious day to, to sh share this information with us. Oh, likewise, Matt. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been a pleasure. I always love our conversations. They're so good. Like, again, we need to do this again sometime. Yeah, for definitely. sure. But yeah, definitely blessed for you and um, all the people who are in here hanging out and learning and realizing that they don't have to be perfect, that they just have to yeah. grow and be better. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah.
It is. It is. So yes, thank you so much. Again, I really appreciate that, you know, the time that you've spent with us. And again, to everybody else that's been, you know, in the audience, we've had some amazing questions. I yeah. love all the questions that have come in in the comments in the chat box. So yeah, everybody, thank you so much. We really appreciate you. And we hope this was helpful and will help you to make this diet and lifestyle fun and exciting and, you know, uh, a sustainable thing for the long term. Exactly. Yay! Awesome. <laughs> cool. Well, you guys have a, a great rest of your Sunday and, and uh, we'll, we'll chat again soon. Yes, you too. You too. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> Thanks so much. All right. Bye -bye. Take care. <laughs>